There's a technique for making mocks that uses styrofoam and you sand and shape the styrofoam, coat it with something, uh, either a, a glue-like substance that hardens or a paint that doesn't react to the foam, and then you make a mold out of it. The mock is just the piece that has the shape that you want the finished piece to look like. And there is some shrinkage. There's shrinkage of the mold, which that's why it's harder to take the mold off of the mock. And there's shrinkage of the piece when you make it. That's why you have to, if it's real critical to have it a certain size, you have to make it a little bit bigger. And also that's why the, the casting comes out of the mold easier than the mold comes off, the mold comes off of the mock. But I was thinking a while back that some type of thin styrofoam would be excellent for making shaped, raised letters and symbols uh, in, my, in my work because a lot of the pieces are flat and sometimes they're, a lot of times, they're countersunk into fiberglass pieces and they have to bend with the surface, um, you know, for appearance sake and maybe I incorporate them into other pieces that are carved or sculpted. And, you know, when I started working with the, the blue foam, the fanful foam, and it just dawned on me that this is a perfect material for what I wanted to do. So what I've done is I've made a, to test how I'm going to do it, which way it would work best, is I made a, a quick mock-up of landing gear for my mud duck. And I'm going to take the resulting mold and make fiberglass uh, castings of it. I've decided to go with the same uh, style that I put on the uh, vertical stabilizer and probably we'll put on other pieces of the, of the plane. I'm, I'm not quite done yet with the designing. Um, it's basically a uh, Celtic flame design. I'm going to wax the piece um, and then spray it with a PVA mold release. That's polyvinyl alcohol. That's what's used the most for fiberglass molding, both on the mock and to make the mold and on the resulting mold to make the casting. I made it over a simple wood form and you can see on the corner here I did the, the normal kerf bending that you do by scoring it with a washer and I have it this is the width of the fuselage to about here so the curve will start from there down and there's another curve on the bottom to make the where the axle goes in for the suspension is straight and you can see I put blocks of wood on the bottom to make them the right, uh, 90 degrees. I also have a cutout in the top center and that's just to reduce the weight. I'm going to bolt it through in four places. I wax the entire piece with a soft paste wax and then I use my finger to get it into all of the grooves all the way around. And that way it takes care of any undercut and it rounds it off, which means it'll slide out easier when you make the mold and the, the mock and the mold, the mold and the casting. I've actually become quite good at making these uh, quick and dirty molds because what I found is that it's faster to make a quick and dirty mold where you have to sand the casting uh, than it is to make a fine polished mold. Especially if you're only going to make, you know, maybe limited quantities, maybe 10 of something. It's actually a lot faster. And what I do is, in the, in the mold, I use a mixture of putty and resin for the first coat. And then the fiberglass and resin behind that. Because the putty and resin is actually a sand, more sandable surface than straight resin because it's softer because of the telt that's in putty. 